Hi, I was lucky enough to be chosen to be a beta tester for the Autopilot product. So I wanted to quickly get a video out. This was not, this is not going to be a very high quality video, but I wanted to show some of the basic features and how well this product works because I'm loving this thing. Um, I apologize for the slightly boring backdrop. Um, I was off on vacation staying in a cheap little motel. So I kind of walked up to the back of this parking lot and tested out some of the features. So it's not the most interesting uh, thing to be flying around and orbiting, but it does demonstrate, uh, I think, most of the features. I, mean, I haven't hit the last couple. But uh, my initial feedback is these guys have done a fantastic job. I think the documentation is excellent. I think that the flow um, of the way that it goes from stuff that's very, very manual with a, couple, with a little bit of um, control by the autopilot software to the more advanced stuff where the, you know, in a semi-scary sort of way, the uh, autopilot software really takes control of your Phantom. So a lot of the things that we, we've seen now with the 3R Solo and some of the other um, products that are out there are now capable for the Phantom. So the first thing I'm going to demonstrate here is the focus feature. So this is just controlling the gimbal. Um, in that it, when, you, when you move left to right, it really doesn't do anything. But if you watch this, as you move, as I move the quad toward me, the gimbal tilts down, even to the point where I am directly, almost directly above me, the gimbal and the camera is then pointed down directly at me. So this worked really, really well. I um, tried this a bunch of times. I also did it the second time, a little further away. Um, I was also curious what happened if you um, if you went beyond the control of the gimbal because again it only works with, with uh, only works the only controls the, the camera if you go left to right it doesn't do anything but if you go if you go directly at the uh, at where I'm at I'm standing right in front of the truck at this point but if you keep going and I, I was experimenting with going a little high here um, a second. But again, it's, keeping, it's doing a pretty good job of keeping the camera on me at this point. Now I'm going to go beyond the truck, which is kind of beyond the control of the gimbal. And what it does is it uh, it stops. And it, it's not much more, I don't think anything more that the gimbal could have done at that point. So I actually experimented after I, I turned it around and they had the gimbal face back at me, and it did a pretty successful job of, uh, of again, getting the, uh, the camera back on me. So the next thing I tested was the orbit, and I, I, didn't, I really want to play with this more. I think there's, it's a great, I think the functionality is good. Um, it does do a pretty good job of keeping focus. I had, it, I had the, the center set right at that kind of a back right of that second truck, and it just kind of rotated around. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise, I, I couldn't figure out how to make it start or stop. Um, it just kind of goes. It just keeps going and going and going until you turn it off. But I think I've got a little bit more. You can change the radius. You can change the height of how high or low the, uh, the quad works. Um, you can also, what's great about all the software is you can change the focus point. So you could have it rotate around and actually have it focus on a different point in space which is really interesting if you think about it. Um, I started testing the follow me functionality a little bit here. Again, nothing, nothing exciting. Um, it's following um, me with my remote control. So, I mean, I'm just walking, but it is fun to watch. You know, I'm not touching the controls right now. It is, it is literally just going as, you know, it, it is sensitive enough to move as I'm moving, just walking in this very, very scenic parking lot. Um, I haven't, again, I haven't done a lot testing with moving um, distance or direction, but you, but you can set um, the, you know, whether it's in front of you, behind you, the angle that it's at, um, how far it is away. There's a lot of flexibility in terms of how this thing works. It's really, really powerful. The final thing I tested was the cable cam feature, which was kind of the most impressive. So what I basically did here is I set two points in space, one kind of behind the truck and one over by the parking lot, different heights, 
And then I had it set to focus on me. And I'm, if you can kind of see me, I'm kind of standing next to the truck outside of um, outside of the sun, so I can see my screen. But this was cool as hell. Watching the watching the Phantom go between these two locations, changing the camera, changing the direction. Um, you can set the speed of how fast it goes. It, sh it shifts the gimbal, shifts everything with the Phantom all at once. And unlike the um, the orbit, where I couldn't quite figure out how to make it go from one to the other, there's a within the the, the control you can set it to go uh, A to B, B to C, or I'm sorry, A to B or B to A. And you can go back and forth. So it's a really easy thing to make it go back and forth. Sooner or later, if they have they allow multiple waypoints, it'll be even more powerful. But uh, this was really cool, and it, again, as you can see, I think it worked really, really well. It kept it kept the camera with me pretty well situated, right, right about in the center of where I was. A um, couple final thoughts. I, I haven't tried the mimic capability, which supposedly lets you kind of test things a little bit, and I haven't tried the intercept, which looked a little more interesting. Where you can kind of point, and it'll kind of go to that point in space. Um, but overall, I, I think this is incredibly cool and I still like flying it manually but this is going to be a lot of fun to play with. Um, just some um, final thoughts here and I'm just a little long as it is but um, I, I saw some comments about which what are requ what's required to use this thing. Um, there is you know it, it's better to have a device that has the barometer built into it. My I'm using an iPad mini 2 which does not so it's still it's a little confusing when you're setting the altitude uh, up front. Um, I have some questions to the developers as to what to do there, but I'm thinking this only impacts you if you're having it follow you and you're personally moving into different altitudes. Because otherwise, if it's set to go 200 feet off the ground and you're at zero and then you move up to 100, you could conceivably could smash in a tree, which isn't a good idea. Um, but I, I, I also have a Note 4, and they're going to eventually come out with an Android version. I think that will solve that problem for me. But it definitely works with an iPad Mini 2, um, as well as the other iOS devices. Didn't have a problem with that. Um, what else did I see on this? It was interesting. Um, uh, there's a lot to this. I mean, I, I have really just, I think, begun to scratch the surface on this. I haven't. Uh, played around a lot with the direction that you're facing it. You can have it point at one thing and have it fly at a different, you know, along a different line, which is fantastic. Um, but uh, overall, I think the developers did a fantastic job on this. So I'm looking forward to doing more testing on it. Any thoughts, questions? Just let me know.